while studying motions, we make certain idealization and assumptions. So our first assumption is that all, so let me write this assumption, is that all physical objects are rigid bodies, are rigid bodies. So rigid bodies are defined by the fact that if you look at any two points on a physical object, as that physical object moves in a space, the distance between the two does not change. So here is my one physical object, let's say this is point A, this is point B, then after a while, the object is, let's say, moved like this. So the distance between these two points, A and B, does not change. And that's what we mean by the rigid bodies, essentially, okay? The second is an idealization. So idealization is that all physical objects can be treated as A, either particles or B, rigid bodies, which have shape and size. Now the first question is, when can we make these idealizations? So when do we treat physical objects as particles? When do we treat physical objects as rigid bodies? It depends on the problem and what kind of properties you are trying to study. So for example, something as big as an aircraft, an aeroplane, can be treated as a particle if you are interested in its behavior as a whole. So for example, if I have as an aeroplane, I know it doesn't look much like an aeroplane, but let's assume this is an aeroplane and we are just trying to understand something about, let's say, its total travel path from JFK airport to, let's say, Tokyo. OK, and it has to, you know, of course, fly from, you know, JFK to um, Tokyo. And while it is traveling, it is constantly changing its orientation. But what we are interested in is overall path it takes or the distance it takes to go from JFK to Tokyo. Okay, so clearly it's going to be a, an arbitrary spatial curve as it travels through the space. And while it is changing its orientation, we are not really concerned about that. We are only interested in this behavior as a whole. So in that case, we can model this entire aeroplane as a particle. So we could model it as a particle. So this is a singular point where we assume that all of its mass is concentrated. And then we can now just focus on its path as this particle moves. So OK, so a very big object can be treated as a particle. So keep in mind that this is not a mathematical particle. Mathematical particle has basically no size and shape. In this case, we are saying that a physical object has been treated to be something minuscule, even though it's in reality not minuscule, and all of its mass is constant at that point. A mathematical particle has no size and shape, but also it doesn't have a mass. An engineering particle, so this is basically an engineering particle. So let me write that. This is an engineering particle. An engineering particle does have mass, and that's the basic difference between an engineering particle versus a mathematical particle. So something as big as an aircraft or, or a spacecraft can be treated as a particle. But on the other hand, if we are interested in analyzing or understanding the motion of something where there is a change in orientation involved, where there is a rotation of the physical object involved, in that case, we cannot treat it as a particle because in that case, it would not make any sense to talk about something as a particle. So, for example, if we were interested in finding out if I have, let's say, you know, I have a, a gear, okay, you know, to, to take a very simple example. So, I have a gear and I say, okay, tell me in certain amount of time, uh, I give you this angular velocity, the rate at which it is rotating, and I ask you in less a certain amount of time, how many revolutions this gear would have taken. In that case, if you treat this whole gear as a particle, then you cannot meaningfully talk about its rotation because there is no size and shape associated with it, right? A particle by definition cannot really rotate and do not confuse rotation by moving along a curved path or along a circular path, let's say, to be specific. So something where there is a change in orientation involved, you cannot treat it as a particle. So if you're talking about those kinds of properties, like, you know, how by how, what 
angle this would have rotated in certain amount of time. So something as small as an electron, if you're interested in the spin of electron, may not be treated as a particle if you're interested in its spin behavior, even though in reality, compared to an aircraft or a gear, it's a very, very small object. Okay, so the size of the object does not determine whether something will be treated as a particle or whether as a rigid body. What determines what will be treated as a particle or rigid body is what you're interested in studying.